All right, so, you know, I'm making this video because I want to talk a bit about GameStop. Today, they, they banned GameStop from being purchased. Can you believe that? And then after hours, right, it dropped to 130 something dollars. And now after hours, it's up back at 311. It was up at 340 earlier, but I didn't make a video, right? Uh, now, I'm looking at this and it's up 311 right now. It's up for, uh, 340 before. So I wanted to make a video because a lot of people online, either the, especially the older folks, I mean, the older folks are the ones that really don't get what's happening. They're just sitting there like, oh, this is a pump and dump scheme. It, especially when you have like CNBC telling you that and they're like drugging like media because they don't really tell the truth. If you take CNBC and what they say, do the exact opposite, you'll do much better with your life than following what they say. Now, CNBC has been pumping Bitcoin like crazy and they never said that was a pump and dump scheme. So let me go back to 20, uh, 2008. 2008 is when the great financial crisis happened, right? And I was just in school at the time. And when I graduated, I graduated in, into the greatest recession since the Great Depression, and which eventually led into the Occupy Wall Street. Now, the Occupy Wall Street was really, you know, uh, pr a protest, right? Occupying the people that basically crashed the financial markets and pretty much made it pretty hard for every young person that was just graduating going out there. And they made it really hard because, you know, people were going bankrupt and stuff, especially the uh, small people. Now, the rich people obviously got richer from the bailouts and everything, but that didn't help the poor people. So they had this Occupy Wall Street. And at the same time, right, Bitcoin was just introduced. And Bitcoin was being aligned with Occupy Wall Street. Now, Occupy Wall Street was about the big corporation. Now, Bitcoin was like, their, their push was like decentralized from the bank, take down the big banks because they crashed the financial markets and everything. They're playing with people's money. Now, take back, take the power from the central banks, give it to the people kind of thing. It was like the Robin Hood, right? So that's why you bought Bitcoin. Now it's totally different. They're not saying that anymore. <laughs> it's a digital asset. So anyways, that used to be what Bitcoin was about. Now, I don't want to talk too much about Bitcoin, but CNBC has been pushing it like crazy. Now, why is that? That's because they're getting big money from big hedge funds and whatever big uh, crypto people on buying it. Right? They're getting advertising revenue. Now, why are they like telling you to dump GameStop? Because the people that are advertising and not just that, the people that are invested in the CNBC and stuff like that, are being hurt by it. So they're telling you to dump GameStop because losing money, like it's making those hedge funds lose money, right? And the hedge fund needs to take out money from other places to cover. And that'll make, like, you know, that'll make other people lose money, the big corporations. So they're pumping out fake news and essentially trying to get people to dump it. That's literally what is happening. They're trying to get people to sell it. And you see this coordinated attack kind of thing. You see it in like, you, you got all the exchanges, pretty much, they disabled the buy button. They only allow you to sell. What the hell? I mean, are you serious? You can only buy, I mean, you can only sell this stock. You can't buy. What if I want to buy it? I don't want to sell it, you know? So the stock has been, and what I heard from some of the other posts, not that I can confirm, I don't even know a tiny bit of it, you know? Because they banned all of the buys, the hedge funds are just selling, right? in between one another, like as a coordinated kind of thing. That's what they're saying online. I'm not saying it because I don't know too much about it, but that's what they're saying. And it sounds correct. So they're selling it to price go down. Now, you know, after hours has gone back up. So anyways, I mean, you couldn't buy it on Robinhood and these things. And they have a fa uh, they filed a class action lawsuit uh, on it, right? So there, that's happening. Now, what I do want to talk about is I don't want to talk about that too much because that's what, just what I heard. I don't know too much about it. But what I do want to talk about is some of the older folks don't really get why people are buying GameStop, Nokia, BlackBerry, Express, all these companies that are pretty much dying. Like they're not dead yet, right? But they're dying. So they don't get why they're buying it. And I'm making this video to kind of explain it. 
So Occupy Wall Street and the people that were buying Bitcoin in the beginning, they were really enthusiastic and really wanted to take down the central banks and the corporation for destroying the economy, for making their life harder. And, you know, as time went on, right, it didn't really, it wasn't that much anymore. I mean, life went on. That's what you'd say. Life goes on. And then they didn't think about it. Now the pandemic hit. Now this is where the pandemic hit. And this is where everything that was bottled up in their hearts came back out again. And now they're supporting the, the most heavily shorted stock, which is GameStop. And, you know, they just drove it up to get back at the corporation. That's essentially what they're doing. So when you're looking at people buying that, it is not because they're not smart. They're trying to make a point. And people that got in because they think the stock is going uh, going to go up for some value, you're in the wrong stock. I mean, if you're buying it, you got to be supportive of the Occupy Wall Street, right? You got to be supportive of taking down the big corporation. If you're not supportive of that, then forget it. And nobody is going to buy anything else. I mean, the wave has settled and it's settled on game stock. Um, stop. So it's settled on GameStop. And they're pushing that up, right? I mean, they're just pushing that so to make their point. And that's essentially it. Because all the thing that has been bottled up, not just uh, from 2008, because you have two generations now, okay? I mean, you have the millennials, which is my age. And then you have the generation right before, after the millennials, right? But the millennials found it hard to get a job, right? After the Great Recession. Now, you know, time went on, but they're still pissed. I mean, they're thinking, hell, I could have had a better life. What the fuck, right? So they're still pissed. Now you have a new generation of people that are locked down in the pandemic that just graduated probably last year. And just now, you know, everybody is sitting at home. So you have these people that are from Gen Z. I think that's what you call it. Gen Z to millennials. Basically like, man, what the fuck? The society is so messed up. And, you know, they're... They're trying to do the same Occupy Wall Street, right? So they're they're basically doing the online Occupy Wall Street with GameStop. Now, the funny thing is, they got disabled out by the they all of these uh, exchanges took out the buy button, and they it, I call it a coordinated attack because if one exchange just took it out, fine, you know, or a small one. But you have all these things going on at the same time. At the same time, you got mainstream media like CNBC going, oh, this is a pump and dump and whatnot. When, you know, they've never said anything even like Bitcoin is a pump and dump. I mean, it, it's funny because now they're right out flat out. They call GameStop a pump and dump, but they don't see the movement behind it. So when people buy GameStop, I don't have any GameStop share. I'm just saying that. I mean, if I was if I grew up in the U.S., I'd probably buy it just to spite them. I mean, a lot of people are doing that to spite the rich. Um, but, you know, the movement behind it, right? They just like it. They just like the stock to spite. Like, they, they're like, oh, I don't mind throwing in money to do it. But now there are some people that are buying into it because they feel they're going to get rich. And if you don't believe in the movement and you're trying to get rich that way, I think you will lose money, to be honest. I mean, you're better off not doing it. Like, you know, I might buy some BlackBerry tomorrow, right? I I put an order in today. I don't know if it went through. I didn't check on it because uh, it was dropping. I put it on like 17 something, 17, um, 20. And it didn't fill because it went, went back up to 19. So we'll see what happens. But I didn't buy a lot. I just bought a little just to join in on the party, right? I mean, if I lose like a few hundred dollars, fine. You know, I, I was part of this movement, this Occupy Street movement. I mean, I couldn't occupy or I didn't want to occupy back then, right? Because I was young and I was thinking, oh, you know, maybe I, I, I was just stupid. You know, my skills are just really bad or something like that. So, you know, maybe that's why whatever. But no, I mean, look at it. Now you see all of these things happening and you pretty much know it's rigged i mean that's what i think anyways i mean if it wasn't rigged why would they have a coordinated kind of thing you have the news trying to like pretty much tell you to sell all these things sell sell all the GameStop stocks so that um like the hedge funds can get out cheap right and then you have the uh the exchanges removing the buy button so the prices can't go any higher 
because if it goes any higher, the hedge funds are going to have to, like, you know, take out money from other places to cover even higher. But so they they don't want that happening. What makes me think, shit, it is rigged. So that's what I think now. I mean, before I had no proof. Now every time, if if anything, I just have to. Oh yeah, have you seen the games game uh, GameStop saga, right? That if you think it's not rigged, right? What what is that, man? That is complete riggedness. So you know everything that was been happening since 2008. Occupy Wall Street saying the system is rigged. It get it makes the rich get richer and the poor get poor. I've always thought. Hey, the poor isn't like, you know, may, maybe the poor just wasn't, I was always trying to strive, right? So, you know, maybe I, I just need to work a bit harder. Now I'm just thinking, this shit is rigged. Like, you know, you could tell from what happened. I mean, so the, the GameStop stock is really about that. Now, there is a saying in the Bitcoin crypto community. It's called HODL. And it's actually, it's supposed to mean hold, right? And I, I seen, if you go through all the form, they tell you the hold because you're holding for the movement, right? You're, you're not holding the stock because you, it's not like if you bought in because of whatever and you're wondering if you should sell, I think you may, maybe perhaps you should do, you should do whatever you want to do. Because if I bought in on that stock, right, I will hold it or hold it rather, you know, because they, they tell you in the crypto community, you hold it. You got to just hold it, man. Like that, that's the entire point, right? You hold on it, right? Because they're still trying to make a point. I don't think it's going to end anytime soon. I think this, this, this is just pissing people off more. And I think as time goes on, they're going to see how the mainstream media is basically trying to push you into, into doing something that'll make you get poor. I mean, like CNBC, I have never followed their advice. They have never been right. And yeah, I mean, they're pushing stuff, but I think people are getting smarter. And you know, hodl, that's what I see people type online. I mean, if I had the stock, I, if I buy Blackberry tomorrow, or if I already have it, let me see if I can get it. Because I I didn't um I didn't get in on it because I, I I'm in Canada, right? And all I do is check out Canadian stocks. But this movement, and I want to bring this to attention too. I mean, you got to think, like this happened in the U.S., right? Which means that, hey, people in other countries, let's say Asia, right? Or other, like Asia is a pretty big country with a lot of investors. And, you know, if they get in on the movement, if they say, oh, yeah, I want to give a middle finger to the corporation. You know how many... People are going to flood the game, stop, stop, stock or whatever. I mean, just to spite, right? But then again, you know, I, I don't know. I've never been to Asia. So what the hell? I can't access my trading preference. So I didn't, yeah, I didn't, the order didn't go through. Or it, it got canceled. What the hell? All right. So anyways, it got canceled. So I didn't get any, maybe I'll, I'll buy some Blackberry tomorrow. But you, usually I've all, my friends have always asked me, hey, why should I buy BlackBerry? I'm like, no, nah, I think that's a dying company. Now they have this movement pushing it. I want to be part of the movement. I want to, because I've always, like I was saying, I graduated in the Great Recession and, or after the Great Recession or somewhere around the end of the Great Recession or during the Great Recession, somewhere around there. And I've always had a hard time and I've always felt that the system was rigged. And now that I, I could see it, right? I could see that them by them trying to protect the rich and let the poor stay poor you're, you're you you know you, you know it's it is kind of rigged in my opinion 